the second Big East semifinal. The surprise team, Providence, matched against the club that always seems to be here, Georgetown. And the winner will take on Syracuse tomorrow for the Big East championship. The Garden sold out for months. So good afternoon and welcome back, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger along with Billy Packer. Billy, there is a remarkable player on this Georgetown team. I think that if it wasn't for David Robinson, he might be the player of the year, and that is Reggie Williams. He can do it all. I would go along with that, Brent. He's, he's not only a great player, he's a great leader for this ball club, and when you consider that most of his teammates are freshmen and sophomores, that really shows his quality to this team. Well, late last night after he came away with a victory, I was able to ask the Georgetown coach, John Thompson, what about the style of today's matchup against Providence. I think Providence plays a tempo game. They, they, you're talking about a racehorse basketball game now because they're going to press and try to get a lot off of their defense. We're going to press and try to get a lot off of our defense. And the thing is, which team cracks? Because they, we play very similar to one another. They might take more three-point shots than we do in transition. They'll pull up and shoot it. We've got to do a good job defensively on the outside. Pressure against pressure, but there's an awful lot of heat on Billy Donovan, the point guard of Providence. They played in the second game last night. And, you know, Billy, he doesn't have a whole lot of relief. He's going to have to go against that horde of Hoyas. Well, he's a guy, though, that lets the game come to him. He had one of the finest guard performances I've seen in a long, long time last year. An extremely smart player and much more gifted athletically than he looks when you see him the first time. Yeah, he scored those 34 points last night. So coming up, we're going to see how he does against Georgetown. We'll be right back. CBS Sports presents college basketball. Today's Big East Tournament semifinal game is sponsored by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Mass Mutual, we insure more than lives, we insure success. And by Miller Lite, for great taste, there's only one light beer. It's Providence against Georgetown. Rick Patino, in only his second year, has done a remarkable job of turning this school's basketball team completely around. Dave Kipfer, the Canadian, up front, along with Pop Lewis and Yasik Duda to start. Then in the backcourt, we will have Delray Brooks, who formerly played in Indiana, along with Bill Donovan, the leader of this team. For John Thompson, no stranger to being here in the Big East semifinals. And he managed to win the tiebreaker, so he wound up in Providence's bracket. That's the front line. Then in the backcourt, he will have Dwayne Bryant, the freshman, alongside a man who has played awfully well this year, Mark Tillman, another freshman. So two frosh in that backcourt, and Tillman has surprised everyone. Reggie misses the game's first shot. Providence comes back down with a miss. That is Lewis, number 23, and they're dark road black uniform these in effect are the home whites for georgetown the highest seeded team wears the whites and they wear gray as their home color he came up on gillery who jumped center and kipper was fouled by gillery in case you just joined us syracuse very impressive led by sherman douglas won that then in two overtimes lsu in the southeast defeated georgia and in another double overtime game north carolina survived DePaul a winner as we roll toward the NCAA championship and Indiana coming back in Ohio State so that Purdue Michigan game will decide who winds up with the highest seed in the Big Ten this year. Billy what can we look for now with these two teams? Well we've got two teams that love the press they love to go to their bench they don't mind fouling somebody uh, you have one ball club that basically is playing three guards and there's one of them right there Billy Donovan in the press Three points. And there's another one, Delray Brooks from the corner with three. They are the number one team in the nation in regard to three-point baskets this year, over eight and a half a game. And he loses it. Providence back again. Lewis tapped back up. Williams, and there was contact with Kipfer committing the foul. And Guillory leaves as Ronnie Highsmith checks in. We will try to keep you up with the substitutes. I will promise you nothing. And Brett, this game is going to flow so fast, I wouldn't be a bit surprised with talking all over each other. But uh, you're in for fireworks when you see these clubs play. Now, here it is. Zone. Set up pressure. Now they drop back. They're picking a man, staying with the traps. Reggie dribbles up the beat. It gets it to Heisman on that jump hook from Georgetown's on the scoreboard. And you've got to go ahead and attack this press. 
Hipper loses it, and Georgetown gives it right back. Not backcourt. Lewis didn't have possession of the ball. You're going to have two coaches working hard against each other here this afternoon, too. These men have had a rivalry here this year. Patino and John Thompson, they split on the air. They exchanged angry words once, subsequently shook hands. But believe me, Thompson and Patino want to beat each other here this afternoon. John Thompson attended Providence, was a player there out of the Washington area, and then became a member of the Boston Celtics. Here's Bryant for the Hoyas, cut off for the penetration. First time we see Providence drop it back in a 2-3 matchup zone of theirs. Lewis rebound, and he yanked it away. Providence will put up the three at any time. Brooks on the penetration. Delray Brooks had big games against Georgetown this year. That's a five-point fire lead. He has had 17 three-point baskets, plus he made that one there. So 18 three-point baskets against Georgetown in two ball games. He was the fellow that Bobby Knight said can't dribble, can't shoot, feet are too slow. Rich Patino said, well, why am I recruiting him? He does have a lot of heart. He's a good kid, and I think that his work ethic is so good that he's developed nicely at Providence. Drive to the corner. The main man is 34 Williams. This is McDonald. He was fouled by Duda as he squeezed the trigger for the first time. McDonald will come up to the free throw line. Now you talk about a player who plays larger than he is. He'll be at the line against Rick Pitino right now. He may be the biggest 6-4 pivot man, offensive pivot man in the United States. But I've got to kid ourselves a little bit here. He was selected as the Big East Player of the Week. In regard to all players, we had him in the ball game he got honored for, and we didn't pick him for the player of the game that game. We picked Charles Smith, who didn't even score in the game. <laughs> I still like Charles. I do. You know, there really was a reason for that, too. He was the guy that turned that game around. So we're not completely off the wall. Here's the Hoyer press. You see Donovan pushing away the bodies. Donovan brings it up himself. Hit Kipper on the wing and back to Delray. The three-pointer is off this time. Nice rebound lead for Duda. Gets away from him. Bryant controlling for the Hoyas. What a pace this one's going to have. McDonald draws another foul. Duda. And now Patino going to go right to his bench. And it's nice when you can keep those big fellas fresh. Not only fresh, but you don't worry about fouls. 6'9", oh Steve Wright checks in, and Duda will leave with the two personals. Talk about work ethic. When Rick Pacino went up to Providence. He started an ethic where they got up in the morning, practiced in the morning, then went to class, came back at a three-hour practice during the day, had an hour for supper, then three hours of study hall, then 45 minutes of foul shooting. We're going to see a lot of free throws here this afternoon. This is the Achilles heel of this Georgetown team that it has been forever, it seems like, or at least since I've been covering them. In the middle, Providence has 15 fouls to give, and they'll put you on the line all game long. Well, Brent, last night in that BC game, I thought that Georgetown was in trouble because they got into one and one early in the second half, and I thought BC would put them on the line. Lewis dribbling up against the Georgetown press. Brooks comes free of the trap, and here's White's first shot. Smith yanks it away for Thompson. And Bryant hits Reggie one of his many spots. The three is short, and Brooks cut him off. Now it's Donovan on the wing. Nice move. It's Lewis, who backed up into the referee, was getting set for a three-pointer. Highsmith foul right, reaching over. Billy, he might have taken it. He hit the referee, and I don't think he was sure who was behind him. You see it coming right up here. Billy Donovan, a nice crossover dribble with a left hand. And you can see Pop Lewis looking for that three-point line. I talked to him about it yesterday, and he said early in the season he used to have to look down. Now it's just a matter of feel. That was Jody Silvestri colliding with Jim Burr and Tim Higgins, the other two referees on the floor for this one. Donovan's three, way off the mark. Tillman on the move for the Hoyas. Bryant fills the middle, but Tillman's going to distance, and it's offensive foul. Right, Lewis had to do some quick moving to get there. John didn't like that call. And here comes our MVP into the game, Charles Smith. He smiled at me broadly when he gave on the most sense. First time we never had someone get that award and didn't score a single point. Well, a lot of times in the game of basketball, the guy can win for you by using his head, not necessarily have to put a lot of points on the board, and that's what he did. 
Now Smith in the game, and also Bobby Winston checking in for the first time. McDonald will sit down. Here's where it really helped to have the three guards in that offense, because you have that extra ball handler against the press. Kipfer has good hands also outside. He sure does, and look at him put it right on the floor. That's a former football player out of Canada. Grew up in Ontario. He had 19 against Georgetown earlier this year. Very experienced ball player. 9-5 Providence. Smith gets it off White's leg out of bounds. Georgetown's ball. Brent, I imagine Kipfer is one of those fellas we'll see in Indianapolis this summer in the Pan Am games, probably playing for Canada. Jonathan Edwards is trying to leave, so too does Heisman. So we have got McDonald returning along with Edwards. Smith is there, and Williams is there. And the pass was thrown in by Winston. Winston, a tall guard, penetrates. Jump pass over, and off the fake, Reggie Williams hits two. If you go to a Georgetown practice, you'll watch that pump fake jump shot. Just right steal by Smith, and here they come again off the steal. In the middle, just where the ball man should go. Reggie comes off, couldn't get it to go off the glass. Stolen, though, by Winston. What a constantly claw. John Thompson recruits intensity. That's one thing that he always looks for. And they go navel to navel with you. Remember John Thompson last night against Boston College was sitting on that bench. He's up and at it today. Brooks off the penetration. Pull up shot. That's going to be goaltending. Goaltending, and it wasn't even close to being on the mark, was it? Reggie had gone up in the Let's air. Let's see. Does he say scored, or was it a foul? No, push-off, I guess. No basket. You bet. It was a push-off foul. Yep, you can see it. little slight push on the inside. Question about it. Push-off. Patino doesn't like it, but we'll be right back. Patino and Thompson. How intense is this rivalry? You remember this scene? Patino coming up the table. He thought John was concerned about a foul, but Thompson was concerned about the roughhouse tactics. And he let Patino have a blast over there in front of the scorer's table. Now, they later shook hands and made up. But I want to tell you a little anecdote as the game goes on about Thompson. He had one of Patino's players in front of him, and he said behind him, there's a dirty player in front of his men, and the kid was so scared he didn't know what to do. And Thompson stood up and he said, I want you to know he's dirty, mean, nasty, and I wish I had five just like him. <laughs> Smith dishes off to McDonald, has it blocked. Kipper coming down for the Flyers. Winston cuts him off. There's that Hoya on defense. Open man's a Reggie. Patino wants a walk. And he tells the official, hey, get down here on this half of the court so you can make a call. He wants Jody Sylvester to hustle back down on the play and not stay in the backcourt. The three years on the line. You're looking at a fellow right there that lets the game come to him. Donovan doesn't force anything, averaging over 20 points a game. Second leading score in the Big East behind Reggie Williams. Set up Winston operating at the point along with Smith on this sequence. There's that matchup. Three points by Williams. Great screen that time for Williams. Kipper couldn't get out there. You folks remember Bobby Dandridge and what he did in the NBA? Boy, does Reggie Williams remind me of a Bobby Dandridge. He can knife through with that build of his. He can shoot it up outside. How about George Gervin? I think he plays better defense than Gervin, too, huh? Yeah, I, I really go back to Dandridge. Playing that, that small and they were able to win an NBA title with him as Highsmith comes in and Edwards will sit down. Taking a look at the scoreboard, how about the way Texas A&M is playing oh, in the oh, Southwest? Lehigh oh, oh, and Bucknell. Our first game. DePaul rolling. And the Tar Heels survive. What was it, four seconds left in overtime? They stole the ball, managed to tie it, got it in double overtime and won it. Jimmy Valvano, who do you think he was pulling for, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> if you ask him, he said he didn't have a rooting. Oh, he better right. take on the tar here. He's had a long drive to you. Want to show we can do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this is about the longest possession we've had in this ball game. Donovan open for three, doesn't take it. Nice key. It's an inside and right on the center. Couldn't get it, and Kipper reaches over, and that's two fouls on Kipper. That was a good feed on the inside. Right, will normally make that shot. That's his second personal foul. Wayne Bryant, number 12. And Jeremy. 
Jackson, number 21, are in for the Hoyas. Darren Jackson, one of the subs for the Georgetown Hoyas. They'll use as many as 12 men. Dwayne Bryant, who started at guard, handling the ball. He has returned. You see that, Smith? Pressure on the ball again, then dropping back to that matchup zone. Going to give Reggie a little breather here early. Smith down the run. Here come up to the free throw line and shoot a pair. And now for Providence, second in, Marty Conlon, the 6'10 freshman out of Bronxville. Followed by Rick Patino. He's a New Yorker. Grew up in Manhattan's East Side and then went to UMass. But he sure knew where to become a graduate assistant, folks. He went all the way out to Hawaii. And Darryl you know, I think a funny story about Rick is when he was working at, for Jimmy Beheim at Syracuse and he's getting out ready for his honeymoon. He canceled his honeymoon to go recruit Louis R, who was at Cincinnati, Cincinnati High School at that time. Is that marriage still intact? Yeah, it is. As a matter of fact, in seven years, they've had four kids. It's not all bad. Obviously, he was not always recruiting. Smith <laughs> at the free throw line. He studied under uh, Hugh D. Brown, too. So, uh, yes, he did. He spent two years here with the right. Knicks. And I watched him last night, and I said to myself, the NBA is going to come a calling on him someday. Brooks pushing off. It'll go to the Hoyas. Now, the guards of Providence are very physical. Both Brooks and Donovan will use that technique. And they get it called right here in the early going. Donovan has to sit down with two now. Patino doesn't mind rotating those fellas on the inside, but he wants all three of those guards available, so he doesn't want any foul trouble there. Watch Donovan always looking for somebody to guard out there in that zone. Three missing by Williams. He was way off the mark that time. Providence fans will jump on him over that one. It's 15-12. Boyers lead the Friars. You've got to be careful not to pick up your dribble when you play against Georgetown. Knocked away and on the steal. Here he comes. No air ball on this one. Mark, we're going to break for a timeout. The Hoyas open up a five-point lead. Billy, let's go to the chalkboard. Brent, you see everybody playing perfect defense for Georgetown. Maybe Heisman should be over a little bit. Everybody except Reggie Williams. He's too far behind Conlon. But watch what happens here because Conlon, Conlon doesn't play his position. Reggie's going to come right around and steal and go. Never should have been able to get that steal if Conlon puts the body on him and blocks him off inside, but Reggie Williams uses that great quickness of his. Conlon inbound. Both rights are on the floor for Providence. They are not related. Donovan's still there along with Lewis. Lewis, 23, brings it across the timeline. Don't pick up that dribble back there. Dangerous spot. Now Donovan sets the attack here for Patino. They're down by five. Nice screen by Conlon. Bryant coming with him, stolen again by the Hornets. Lead pass, and here he is again. Brent, that was just great individual defensive play from a technique standpoint. Too much defense that time. Foul on Bryant. But you can see how that defense is so good that it's taken Donovan out of the ball game a little bit. He tried that bounce pass, and the positioning is what made the steal. Foul by Dwayne Bryant. That's his first person. Donovan with one three-point basket here so far. 12-20 to go in the first half. Scored 34 last night against St. John's. Brooks. A little bit of an off-balance shot wouldn't go, and here come the Hoyas. Jaron Jackson, 21. He's fouled. Donovan commits his first. Now, one thing I will say about this Providence club, they are a fighting team. When they get down, they have some good runs of their own. But right now, Georgetown's putting on a defensive clinic. Billy, how does this compare with how they played defensively against Boston College last night? They shocked me a little bit last night. And I think John Thompson is an excellent coach. But I thought last night, 
he allowed BC to stay in the game. They have Dana Barros, who's an outstanding guard, and John normally would run a lot of defensive players at him and wear him down, but he went back. They played very passively defensively last night, and they more than likely could have lost that game as opposed to winning it. Today, it's an entirely different John Thompson and an entirely different defense we're seeing. Hey, wouldn't Thompson love to take this team to New Orleans for the final four? He has four New Orleans players on this Hoya team. It'd be like a home game down there for him. He likes to hide out at a hotel and go to home. That's Perry McDonald. He's just out strapping him. Got the edge and hustle right now going Georgetown's way, and they are dominating off the fake. Williams penetrates. Out of bounds, Georgetown's ball. No foul on that play. Reggie Williams can't believe it. Due to returns. Wright is out. Jaron Jackson. Jackson leaves. And we're looking at one of the nation's top 10 scoring clubs in Providence, and they're being held to 12 points after 10 minutes. No, no basket. Lewis grabbed him before he pulled the trigger. McDonald burned him, and Lewis wrapped him up from behind. His first personal foul, and McDonald, one of the New Orleans players, steps up to that free throw line. In fact, was he the first one to come to Georgetown out of New Orleans? The other three followed. I don't remember the sequence. I think he probably was. They might have been somebody before him, but not in this era. about that too Brent I talked to like Dale Brown and other coaches that were down in that area and they didn't feel these fellas were, were that outstanding I'll tell you I think John Thompson looks for different things in athletes than a lot of recruiters now, every time I look at one of his teams in practice I look at the legs I think that's I don't think John looks at anything other than the legs that I can use those legs in my program they usually represent thoroughbreds yep great defensive team pressure well, they kept the heat on Donovan, didn't they? Now Lewis fires the three. Providence does that so well. They can use that weapon to get back in any game. 21-15. Never out of it when you've got shooters like Providence. What happened to Georgetown that time, it took three to slow Donovan down, which meant that uh, there were only two guys to guard the rest of the, the Providence club. Williams has missed a lot of shots here today. Winston off a fake throws one. Oh, fan a bad shot. Donovan is fouled. Tillman. That's his second personal. Now, most people are aware of Donovan. In the first two years he was at Providence, had a, actually averaged 2.3 points a game as a freshman, a little over three oh, points as a sophomore. Oh, thought about leaving the school. Then committed himself last summer, or two summers ago, dropped 20 pounds, worked on his game, and has developed a, one of the real star players. That clock has not moved a tick. Get ready for a replay controversy. That clock finally starts. Somebody has got to notice that the clock wasn't moving. Well, did it. Foot's over there. He, I still, he still doesn't have it working. He's got it now down at 10.45, but what do you figure? Eight seconds or so, Brent? I would say that. It might, you know, it might have been longer than that, Billy. But because it's not a critical point in the game, I'm not sure that either coach was looking at the board. And what's interesting, the scorer is looking over this way and saying, it's all my fault, but I got it under control. <laughs> What's over there? Yeah. If John Thompson was upset about this time, he'd be all over him right now. Well, the guy that wants the time back would be Patino because he's behind, but he didn't. he's not aware that the clock was never started. You don't see Donovan miss many of those. There it is to Smith. In off the fake. Offensive foul, however. Donovan back to draw the charge. So with 10.38 to go in the first half, along with Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger, the Garden of New York. Syracuse already in the final, and here at Georgetown, leading Providence 23-16. to 16. Defense has established this lead for John Thompson's Hoyas so far, but Providence a scrappy bunch, and they'll come back. Good screen by Kipfer. Donovan's having to work so hard to get the ball up court, he doesn't have an opportunity to get him in their offense. Really has excellent stamina. And you notice when he puts the ball on the floor, Lewis and Delray Brooks move out to the three-point range on the wings. Great steal by Smith. Boy, does he anticipate well. Winston on the pull-up with a nice shot off the break. 
Luter was a defender deep down, and so he just came up with the shot. Myers it would seem to be tough a little bit, Brent. That 11 o'clock game last night. Doesn't it look like Providence doesn't look as quick as they were last night? A little bit out of their legs. Meanwhile, the Hoyas did not play a good game last night. Thompson might have reminded his team of that. Knocked away by Heisman. Look at this defense. Again. A hand on the ball. Again, quick right pass to Winston. He's up again. But there is a charge out front. going against Georgetown. It's a good play by Delray Brooks. The only thing that he could do. Followed by John Smith. But Georgetown is a lot fresher than Providence here in this ball game. Well, the brackets, because Georgetown was seated number one in the tournament, they got to come to Boston College and then play the winner of the St. John's Providence game. But Syracuse beat Pittsburgh, and so tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern time, Syracuse will play the winner of this game between Providence and Georgetown with Steve Wright, the 6'9 junior from Syracuse, Fowler High School. Some people wondering uh, if Georgetown got that draw because they had the best record against those two clubs. Who was the real problem for Georgetown? It was Seton Hall. Beat them twice. Beat them twice. Seton Hall had a chance yesterday against yep. Pittsburgh. And in the second half, Jerome Lane took charge of that game. Turned over. It goes to Providence. It's a 25-18 game. 9-51 first half. There's a man that Thompson would like very much, huh? Patrick Ewing, center for the New York Knicks, watching his former team in action here. Lewis is three, short, Williams rebounds. Winston fires across to Smith, and they get it into High Smith. There's a three from Smith. Charlie Smith being very aggressive. He's earned his playing time. He's doing a job with it. You know what's uh, difficult, Brent? Whenever you play in a court that has both a pro three-point line and a college line, for players to, to uh, exactly know where they are on that floor. So the tendency to look down, there's a line in front of you. Sam Jefferson out there for the first time. Reggie again off from the side, and Delroy Brooks gets it to the man in the middle. Donovan spins and loses it. A blocking foul is called on Smith, and John was not very happy about that because it's the third personal foul against him. Yeah, but give uh, Donovan a lot of credit there. With that reverse dribble, he did the 360. When you have a man coming up on you like that, it's very difficult to change in time. Great 360 dribble move. Both teams over the limit. We're at the 8.59 mark. You see Smith goes out and it comes right back in with Brian. And uh, maybe a, a more physical athlete, much quicker. So Donovan won't get any break here at all. I don't think a team in the country can come at, at you with as many physical guards as Georgetown can. Well, you hit the front end of that one and one. It's critical when you're trying to come from behind. Donovan, I think, warning the referees not to let him get in that lane too early. He's an 85% free throw shooter. Excellent follow through. Cuts the lead to eight. Georgetown's defense has created more turnovers, basket opportunities than Providence has so far. See Georgetown's going right over the top of that front line of the press. Winston, a tall point guard. Bryant and Jackson positioned on the wings with Jefferson and Highsmith. Inside of this Thompson lineup. Bryant turned it over. On the travel, it'll go. You know, one of the things if you're playing against Georgetown, Brent, you have to think about how do you attack this team defensively. I think you have to make Georgetown prove that their interior guys can score. High Smith and initial take. Jefferson in the ball game. I, I think you want to make them go ahead and show they can have a 15, 18 point game. Then you know that Providence only has one field goal against this defense in the last six minutes. And Lewis maneuvering, you can see that defense all over in that time with Jackson. Jackson so quick. Donovan. Lewis penetrates. He comes up over, but he had a hand in his face. Right. Every shot has been difficult. I think in Lewis's case, he ought to try to draw the foul when he goes ahead and gets a man off the ground there. Here comes a trap out of the 2-3 uh, matchup. Half-court trap. Jackson's got Highsmith. Two well-coached teams. Providence goes with a nice 
shot. Very well conceived. Georgetown pulls it back out and attacks it well. Georgetown again up by 10. Reggie Williams due to return. Brooks nails two for the Friars. That's the first easy shot they've had in quite some time. You notice how Brooks kept that hand up there. Oh, Mr. Basketball in Indiana. Really has a great attitude about transferring. Knight is happy for him. Gatling on the telephone this year. Congratulated him on the kind of success he's had at Brighton. There's no animosity no, between either us. Way. No. Jefferson turned around. Foul by Wright. And that's his second. Now Brent, that's what I'm talking about defensively. Make Georgetown show that Jefferson and Ty Smith and the rest of their players on the inside can do some scoring. Well, what is it? I called it Reggie and the uh, rotations, the way Thompson shuttles players in that. John now calls it Reggie and the miracles. He says because if it wasn't for Reggie, there'd be no miracles. Well, he's probably true there. How about like Michigan at home? You remember the last time we had them going up against the ball club, uh, I tell you, Iowa. If that happens, that puts pressure on the committee tomorrow as to which team they're going to see number one in the Midwest. If Indiana moves back in and Purdue is blown out this afternoon by the Wolverines, well, I don't think the choices are going to be as easy as they looked about a week ago with well, what's going on in these if tournaments. If everything goes the way it has in the past, they figure out who's playing at home and they put Purdue there. <laughs> I, I guess that, right? <laughs> Watch what Gene Cady has to say about that. Purdue opens at Syracuse. That's right. That's against Syracuse. <laughs> Who else? So they can play Arizona and Tucson. Check it out there. This is what the, uh, the standings look like. Indiana came on with a win. So they're sitting there at 15 and 3, and they would pull into a tie. There's no tiebreaker. Co champions of the Big Ten. So it's up to the committee, and they split their two games. Is that right? Purdue and Indiana? I think that's, that's right. right. 7 04 to go here in the first half. Like that Alabama team. Keep an eye on them the rest of the way. Well, maybe a neutral court. You play Alabama and Birmingham. Birmingham okay. There you go. Shot, not a good one. Brian jumps the pass into McDonald's hands, but he traveled. We're at the 636 mark, and we've got a stoppage in play. We'll be right back. A moments ago, we took a look at Patrick Ewing, that impact center who came to Georgetown, and we are told that the next big man to expect who can lead a team all the way is Alonzo Mourning out of the Tidewater, Virginia area. We asked Alonzo where he was headed. Would he follow you in to Georgetown? I got a list of uh, various colleges. Um, Georgetown is, is in on the list. No, I wouldn't say nobody's on the top right now. The young man is a junior. And so a lot of schools will be down talking to him and trying to convince Alonzo Mourning. Isn't that a marvelous name? He's only a junior. One more year to go. And they say, the scouts, he's the real thing. That's scout terminology for good play. <laughs> That's good overplay pressure. Oh, oh, nice going pass. down was foul. Good pass on the way down. And we're going to see a big man. You know they say big men can't shoot fouls. Watch Conlon, 80% free throw shooter. Excellent oh, technique. So with Anthony Allen checking in, let's get you up to date on everything that has happened here this afternoon. Madison Square Garden, we have 621 to go. Georgetown hitting 55% for the field. They've yanked away 14 rebounds, 16 points from the bench. Brooks with nine and Williams from nine. You know, it is somewhat misleading to say bench scoring with Georgetown because I'm never too sure who the starters are. They got one big fellow that jumps center and then goes out right after that. Yeah, that's not really fair in regard to Guillory there. I want to talk about the regular starting lineup. Conlon, uh, well, of course, Providence, too, Brent, with over 24 points a game coming off of their bench. Jackson coming up short on the shot. Going to go back the other way. He's out of play. You know, Reggie Williams has missed nine shots here this afternoon. It's kind of forced some shots. Too. He's taking some unusual shots for him. They're not necessary. There's that defensive technique again, having those hands down. Even though he didn't know the pass was coming, his body position was so good he was able to deflect it. They don't guard the man taking the ball out of bounds. They're trying to keep the ball away from Donovan. Shamsi Dean on the floor. Up 
Abdul Shamsi Dean, the freshman from Providence. He's number 25, one of their big men. Donovan gets it into his hands. Throws up a left-handed shot and contributes right away. He's one of those rookies of the week this year. Shamsi Dean will see some more playing time if he keeps that up. A left-hander sometimes has an advantage because defensively you're looking for that right hand to come up and suddenly it's over on the other side. Out of bounds and a go to Providence on the turnover. That's 11 turnovers by the Hoyas here in the first half. Nice little run coming up by Providence. Reggie Williams are really not doing the job there. That ball was too difficult to handle. John Georgetown has called a timeout. Thompson is not happy with the sloppy play right now. It's lecture time for the Hoyas. We'll be right back. The Orangemen of Syracuse looking on, and they will play the winner of this game in a championship, Selection Sunday on CBS, and you'll start off by watching the NBA champion, Boston Celtics, go against the Detroit Pistons. The Pistons could be a sleeper team when we roll around to the playoffs. Then we'll be here in Madison Square Garden. After that, we've got CBS Sports Sunday coming your way with gymnastics, and at 5.30 Eastern time, you see the committee out in Kansas City. They'll set the 64-team field. They'll seed the four 16-team regions, and we'll find out who the top 16 seeds are tomorrow afternoon, 5.30. You know, Billy Donovan's had a tough afternoon, Billy. He's only one of two. They've shut him down. They really have. They're putting a lot of pressure on him and making him give up the ball. And what I'm really impressed with is Georgetown defense against the three-point shot. They're just not letting anybody have an easy one for three. They're letting Providence go inside a little bit, but they just don't give you anything on the perimeter. You can see the cutting off of Billy Donovan by Tillman. I mean, it's tough. He has to scrap not only to get a shot off, he has to scrap to get the ball back. They are all over the floor leader of the Friars. You, you ever check out Billy Donovan's knees? <laughs> They're just all bruised and battered red. He is the Scott Scott this year, if you will. Brooks off the fake, throwing it up. He'll come to the line and shoot a pair. There he is. Remember Scott Skiles and the run he gave us last year with Michigan State? Donovan is that same kind of overachiever. I, Skiles might have had a little more raw talent than Donovan, but no one achieves more with what he's got than and I, Donovan. A, a, a difference in attitude, too. This kid has, like, quiet leadership. Skiles, like, challenged it. He, was, you know, he just wanted to put it in your face all the time, and he was very verbalized. Did you ever talk to Donovan? Yes, and, and I, he's a very polite gentleman. He's almost like in awe of all that's happening to him. But he doesn't play that way, but uh, that's the way he acts. Now, Skiles want to spit right in your face, you know, jump right up in your shirt. This kid looks like he's going to be the altar boy. <laughs> on the and Allen hits the slam. I thought that was Iowa coming down on that break. 34-27. Warriors have led throughout this first half. See, the inside game is just not there for either team offensively, and both clubs defensively taking advantage of that. Georgetown keeping the pressure on this Providence club. Perry McDonald like to have that ball down in low. He's in a position where he almost got a chance to handle it. imagine this Georgetown team if they could shoot free throws and they had a great half-court game? You'd never get them out. He's got a great half-court game. Now he is their half-court game. Yep. Conlon was really aware of where he was the whole time. And Reggie Williams had used his patience to finally get open. Straight man-to-man -man by Georgetown. And Tillman about the fourth guy that's been on Donovan. So he's faced a fresh man. Good solid screen. Depth taking its toll. And the belly yeah. comes up and he hits that. And Brooks I think, has had a fine first half. I think last night's also taken its toll. It's just not the Christmas on the part of Providence's club. Boy, they are putting it on Purdue. The last game of the year last year. Remember, Michigan put it on Indiana. Not exactly the same team, but same results here. Kind of surprised me, too. I thought Purdue would go ahead and uh, play an outstanding game today. Lewis knocked the ball out of bounds, and there are your Demon Deacons down there. Maybe I put them in that ACC final two quickly. I'm talking about Jim Valvano and State. And if Bob Stack gets the Wake Forest team to the ACC final, it'll be one of the great coaching accomplishments in some time. 
They won two conference regular season games this year. You know, and if you're Providence now, down seven, this game is slowing down a little bit. It might help them get some legs back. You know, think the same thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's a smart move for Georgetown to go ahead and get this into a passive game. They travel. It goes over to Providence. And Thompson there it pays. How things are going right now. Well, seven-point game. Brent, what, I, what I see happening right here is that Georgetown being passive on offense has given Providence an opportunity to get their second win. Georgetown was ready to knock them out by just going right after them. There's a split of the double team, and what happened? Billy Donovan dropped his foot back and went over half court, and he was back court. That's 11 turnovers by Providence, 12 by Georgetown. Take what, a look. Watch this, Brandon. He took he like the double shuffle, and when he did, his left foot went back and went over the line. 245, first half. Jim Nance will be coming up at halftime. He'll get you up to date with what's going on and all those other tournaments around the land. It's incredible to think that they're holding Purdue down to 21 points. McDonald, chance for the three-point play. Shamsi Dean will leave with a couple of personals, and Duda checks back in his second personal foul. Now the problem for Providence, if they're going to try to go ahead and make a run, and, and it looks like he's kind of getting away from them a little bit here, is they've got to do some things with a three-point play. They're the best in the country at the three-point play, but Georgetown's taken that away from them so far. And Providence is normally a great ball club, not only shooting the three-pointer, but also preventing other teams from getting in. Donovan's three. Tried it. McDonald rebounding. And he was fouled again. He'll come up to the line. Both teams have been over the limit. Let's take a look at the three-point statistics, Billy, to follow up on what you're saying. There's it. 8.2 a game. And today they're really having their problems out there. UNLV on the break, of course, uh, shooting a lot of three-pointers. Watson is knocked out, and Butler represented basically by one man. Providence has hit three of eight today. Georgetown two of five from three-point range. And Georgetown not a team that shoots a lot of three-pointers. They run hard. They go to the basket. John believes to take it right up to the hoop. from Duda, out of bounds, it'll be Providence's ball. I don't know if that was because of a switch, but Perry McDonald ended up on Donovan on that last play. Now Georgetown goes to the zone out of bounds. Way back to Lewis, saves it. They're matching up again, that 1-3-1 matchup by Georgetown. Lewis is one of the three-point artists, but they're rattling out not staying down like they did last night against St. John's. Winston whips it inside. And an easy layup for Anthony Allen. Trent, I think the most dangerous opponent a team can have is fatigue. And that's what we're seeing. When you're not hitting those three-point shots, great pass inside, good look, good two-handed chest pass technique-wise. But when that fatigue hits, for some reason, the spring of the legs is not there, and you have that three-pointer just not hitting. Second personal on Conlon with Allen. Texas. Freshman missing, Lewis rebounding. There are those free throws again, causing a problem for Georgetown. Providence trying to get a little burst here for Coach Patino before the intermission. That's the time remaining. Now they go right back to man-to-man. -man. Jefferson on Donovan. Whipped inside the Conlon. It's the Back to nine. And it's tough to go ahead and have to chase, too. An important closing minute here for Providence. They'd like to have something to build on when they take this break. Patino barking defensive instructions. He doesn't need a chair over there on the bench. Normally does a lot of walking on that sideline. Jefferson. Oh. This Providence's ball. Conlon 
through the foul underneath. That's the first on McDonald. It's really not the shot that John Thompson would want. He'd like to hold on the hands of Reggie Williams when he gets down there to the 8 or 10 seconds. Or you go ahead and get McDonald, but uh, Jefferson got stuck with the ball. Jaron Jackson returning for Thompson. And that gives John Thompson an opportunity to come back with the three guards. He's got 43 seconds to go, so he'll probably hold it for the last shot. Conlon has 81% of his free throws. But there's that bench scoring again. And kind of a misnomer, but Conlon's the team that gets a lot of points out of their bench over 24 a game. Not getting much at all today. Daryl Wright replaces Ernie Lewis. Not one to pick up any more fouls. Kind of an unorthodox shot, but it works. He hits better than 80% of his free throws. Abdul Shamsi Dean, number 25, in for the Friars. Final 43 seconds. It's 40-33 Georgetown. Good double team. Trying to force Georgetown to put something up here quicker than they want to. Shot clock off. Winston swings into the middle and is picked up. Allen couldn't get the handle. He traveled 24 seconds. Good burst here by Providence if they can close with another field goal. Patino will want one last shot. Friend, there's a case for inexperience. You want to have that ball in the experienced man's hands. Get the last shot of the half. Don't allow anybody to make the move. That's what Providence is going to do right now. I'll tell you, three and really turn on the Providence fans here. Well, even if you got it down to five, that'd be a pretty good half considering the way they play. Now they're down to ten seconds and they'll have to go. They've got to clear out for Dunby. Almost had that problem with stepping inside. Looks off a fake. Right misses. And that'll be the half. It's a seven-point Georgetown lead. Coming up, Jim Nance and James Brown in our studio with the scores and highlights. And we'll return. After this message and a word from your local stations. Smoking is not permitted. In every crowd at every Big East game, you'll find them. Yes, CBS Sports presents college basketball. Today's game is sponsored by Budweiser, the genuine article. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Audi, if you want performance and handling in a German luxury sedan, you're ready for an Audi. And by 7-Up, pour in cool and clear. 7-Up feels so good coming down. Georgetown leads Providence by seven at the half. Take a look at the shooting statistics. Would you believe that Reggie Williams is only five of 14? The rest of the Hoyas, 10 of 11 or 60%. Meanwhile, Providence, 38%. From the bench, that reveals the great depth that John Thompson has. And Billy Packer, what can Providence do to climb back in this game? Well, from a standpoint of pure strategy, they're going to have to play the same way they have all year, which is the press and all, looking for the three-point play. But what Georgetown has done in the scouting report, which is very smart, they're saying, look, you can't score inside, so we're going to make, we're going to take away that outside three-pointer. And I think they've defended the three-pointer as well as you possibly can against the team that leads the nation in that particular category. So here is a young man who will not be able to play, Billy. Really hurts. Carlton Screen, an outstanding uh, guard who's uh, got the type of quickness and the legs that are necessary for Providence right now today to get back in his ball game. And to be quite honest with you, uh, friend, after watching Providence last night and all the effort that they put in beating St. John's, and I, I thought that there was a point in the game where, without question, they had the game won, and yet they kept the starters out there right down to the last few seconds that they would need those legs today, and they really have not recovered very well. And, of course, going against the Georgetown team that's so deep and so fresh, uh, it has really taken away their game. Syracuse is next. Billy, how did Georgetown and uh, Syracuse make out? Well, Georgetown was able to do very well against uh, Syracuse and Pitt, so I don't think that uh, looking at past records, uh, Georgetown would have anything to worry about. But Syracuse is the only team to have beaten Georgetown in a Big East tournament play. Now, this game is not over, but uh, that is something going in Syracuse's favor. I want to say something in Providence's favor here. We're talking about getting worn down. The way Patino has worked this team, i got to believe they're in pretty good shape. Kipper comes in and draws the foul. He'll step up to the line. He really wanted that ball to drop so he could go for the three-pointer. Now, if nothing else, Patino has driven this team so that they should be in physical condition and be able to come back on a 
short turnaround. I'm going to see if that doesn't work out. Now, I know how tough it is to take on a Georgetown team and all that depth. Well, sometimes the mind and the heart are there, but the body just doesn't get you there. Basketball is one of those sports when you start to lose the legs and lose that half a step, it really costs you. Your first two free throws. They edge to within five. Jonathan Edwards replaces Highsmith. Eight seconds into the second half. Stolen by Donovan. Wiles holds it up and almost stepped back and traveled. Now it's Pop Lewis over to Donovan. Donovan was shut down in case you just joined us. Kipper coming up again. And he's put four quick points on that scoreboard right now. Total of eight for the game. So Providence has looked him right in the eye here at the start of the second half. Can we talk about the courage of this ball? Almost though? stolen. Knocked out of bounds by Brooks. They have been a good comeback team all year long. And really, if you're Georgetown, you'd have figured looking up at the scoreboard, you'd have them in a much better position now with a much bigger lead. The one thing Georgetown's going to need before this is over is for Reggie Williams to regain his shooting eye. They may need to make some free throws, too, Brent. This is eight unanswered points for Providence going back to that first half. Inside to McDonald. There's the case where the matchup zone is so concerned about the fellas breaking to the outside and left a nice seam to get the ball down inside. Kipper had broken in behind Edwards. Now they get it to him in front, and he's going right to the glass. Rejected by Edwards. Williams comes out in the middle. It's three on two with the Warriors. Back to Reggie. Touch pass. And the foul is called. That's his third personal foul. That's a good three-on-one break. One of the things Reggie Williams can do so well on the break is to take it off a rebound and take it down the court and lead the break. Good touch pass on the side. Brian almost slipped a little bit there and got fouled coming over the back. The question is whether or not Patino should leave Duda in the game with the three personals right now. I think he's, you know, he's very comfortable with what he can do with Wright coming in for him. Here come the Hoyers starting to miss again at that free throw line. Yeah, this is, as you pointed out early in the game, Brent, this is really their Achilles heel. One of two for the freshman guard. Look at the job Michigan did. Can you believe that Purdue would put up only 24? They may be costing themselves that trip to Indianapolis as the number one seed in the Midwest. On the turnover by Providence, the Hoyers come back down. It looks like Patino has said, look, we can get the ball down in low. Let's try to score inside. The first half, they counted on getting the ball outside with a three-pointer. They have dropped everything down in low. Williams' three-pointer is not there. Due to battling for the rebound, Hoyas get it out. Oh, Williams comes up. Oh. Oh. I think Reggie Williams' shot selection today has been questionable, Brent. Donovan has it stolen by Williams. Certainly not his defense. Here comes Braun and the just when Patino gets a run, and here comes George down back, which Patino's going to take a timeout. Patino will use a timeout. It has quickly gone back to 10. The Hoyas lead. We'll be back. And the Pistons. Then we'll come to Madison Square Garden for the Big East Championship, and there's still more to come. The McDonald's American Cup Gymnastics Championship will be coming your way at 4.30 Eastern. And then at 5.30, it's the road to the Final Four, the NCAA Tournament Selection Show. They will tell us where everybody is headed out of Kansas City tomorrow afternoon. Brent, you remember last year when we thought they were putting the things up on the board and actually they were faking us out? We could watch them on the monitor? <laughs> see, a lot of people sit around at home tomorrow and see just how close they could come to picking out those selections. McDonald commits the personal foul, and Daryl White knocked down attempting a three-point shot. He'll move up to the free throw line. That's his second personal foul. That inside scoring, Georgetown with 22, and Providence with eight, so that is perhaps why Patino said, let's get the ball inside and get some more points down low. Exactly. When you go in there at halftime, you look at the stats, you look at the shooting charts, and you say, wait a second, one of the things we're not doing, fellas, and this is something that Rich Patino believes in, and that is to get a good three-point shooting team, you've got to go inside first and then let the defense collapse, then bring it back outside, and obviously they weren't doing that well in the first half. Now Providence will set up the full court pressure after the made free throws. Notice they don't guard the man taking the ball out of bounds either. They have somebody back for safety. 
Here's Bryant. Quickly with his pass that was beautiful. And Duda came flying in, forced to commit his fourth personal foul or give up an easy field goal. Now he will come out, and Abdul Shamsi Dean, the 6'10 freshman, will replace Duda. Oh, my. Notice how good an athlete Tillman is. You know, it, it, you watch Georgetown guys break to the basket, you don't realize we're talking about a six foot two inch guy here. Tillman being so powerful, took the ball right to the hoop, right up around the rim for a dunk. I mean, we're not talking about a six six man here. How many teams win major conference championships starting two freshman guards? As we mentioned earlier, John Thompson was named coach of the year, and I think the reason for that was that basically had Reggie Williams and no true tested other players out there. Ten point Georgetown lead. Donovan working against that push. One Hoya after another on Billy. He penetrates this time, gets it off the right. Missed everything. Breaking free was Tillman. They couldn't pick him up in time. Would have been a very difficult cross-court pass. Williams is open. Just cannot get his rotation today, but he saves it, and he's helped out defensively. Reggie Williams has been gliding on that shot a little bit, Greg. We had a perfect angle of it right there. He went up. Instead of coming up square, he was gliding off to the right. that he creates. Today, you can see he's just not blowing by anybody. Yesterday, he took Mark Jackson, who's one of the best guards in the country, just turned him inside out. Not getting it done here. Georgetown's run in the last four minutes is 13 to three. Williams got a hand in behind Kip for a slick move. Gets it back on the pass from Bryant. Comes up for the layup, missed it, but offensive rebound Bryant. Here's Donovan taking it away. Reggie Williams having a rough day, too. Lewis' <laughs> inside pass was pretty close to being connected to a teammate. McDonald was standing there. What did John say before the game? Both of our teams score an awful lot off our defense. And basically, that's been the story here. There's another one. Well, Ray Brooks leads to Donovan. You just don't get any easy baskets against Georgetown. The way they get back on defense, something really saves them. Tipper. Nobody back. Good look by Bryant. He's asked to come out. He's a little tired. If he's tired, think of what Donovan is. Bryant asked for some help, so John Thompson's going to go ahead and get a sub for him. And Rick Pitino will use a timeout. This one on the verge of getting out of hand. 55-41, all Hoyas. We'll be right back. Well, what a difference a night makes as far as Providence is concerned. Billy Donovan lit up the scoreboard here in Madison Square Garden against St. John's with what was then a tournament record, 34 points. Now he has only three. One of three. Three-pointer from the field. 
afternoon for the Friar leader. He's had, what would you say, four or five different men shading him throughout the course of the day. Now it's Charles Smith. Brooks with a three-pointer. Donovan has had Smith on him, Brian on him, Tillman's been on him. Jaron Jackson. Almost turned over by Winston, and then he gets it up quickly into McDonald's hands. Smith, Williams, Highsmith, Winston, four. The other thing that's tough, Brent, is when you're a little tired and you think, well, you're down at this point, you have to come out maybe to put some pressure on man-to-man. -man. Providence is primarily a matchup zone team. That when they do go press you half court, it's in a zone trap. And as this game whittles down, if they had to go man-to-man -man after somebody as tired as they are, and that not being their defense, they might be in serious trouble. Into Highsmith. Jump hook was short. Williams was there for the offensive rebound. He drew the foul, and Williams will move to the free throw line. Three on Kipfer. And Providence down. Providence is a club that not a lot of size on the inside. And they, they go ahead on a year. They've rebounded exactly the same as their opponents. 36 a game. And kind of surprising that you have Donovan getting three rebounds a game. You've got Delray Brooks at 3-7. Three, three and Pop Lewis at 4.3, so basically they've been getting their rebounding because they spread you out from those fellows that play the perimeter. Right now they're getting beat to the boards inside pretty handily. And Delray Brooks, one of those guards, getting another rebound. They are not a power club. Lewis swings free. Good switch. switches over on him, and Donovan's three. Not on the money. Williams saying, hey, hey, going on? Why wasn't there a whistle underneath the basket? I was dancing with it. Well, it ha if any foul was called at all, it would have to have been on Conlon. And Rich Petito's hollering at the ref, call a foul. <laughs> it would be on his own man. <laughs> Smith off the fake. Just an inside, reach. but there was a reach in. An indication of the tired player. Yep. Usually when he starts to reach defensively. That's three fouls on Brooks. Particularly teams that are so well drilled as Providence is, they, they normally move in those feet very well. They're usually not giving up that second shot on the rebound because they get in good position. Smith's three. Georgetown, they've had some classic battles. One of the classic battles of all time in the Big East tournament finals uh, when Pearl Washington had maybe the game of his life. There's a foul down the side. Is that going to be a technical on Patino? Yep. Now here's the, here's the play we're talking about. Conlon's got Reggie Williams. Reggie's saying, get him away from me. See Patino over there screaming for a foul. I think it goes back to that play. Patino just getting a little frustrated. Yeah, Williams missed the free throw. The first one. Of course, a technical on a coach is a two-shot foul. Missed them both. He's having a rough day. Reggie's expression never changes, though. You know, whether he's scoring 30 or whether he's not having a day. Has an expressionless face. Anytime you can catch Reggie Williams in a shooting slump such as this, you have to feel you got a shot against the Hoyas. But here it is, 59-44. The rest of the club has picked up the slack. The Miracles are doing it. Good fake by Smith and Great by Brooks to come over and block that. Inside the tipper. Uh, Dunnewin was able to freeze the defense by looking one way and passing the other to Kipper, who has real good hands on the inside. Another thing that Georgetown has done today is they've taken the crowd out of the game. Notice how silent it is here in Madison Square Garden. Kind of like a clinic. Smith's three. Bangs in another one. 
Charles Charles Smith is earning himself some playing time. Ten points for Charles this afternoon. Yep, he had himself all squared up on the shot. Right coming through. He was fouled by Highsmith, his third. In the Big Ten, the Boilermakers are down by 32 points. But so we have projected a lot. And I'm just going to say this is election night coverage here, and we already, without that, we've uh, CBS Control Central has uh, projected a loss for Purdue. That's co-champion uh, situation here with Purdue and Indiana. And uh, Mr. Schultz, it's up to you who goes to Indianapolis. Is right at the free throw line. The rest of that committee will meet tomorrow in Kansas City. Dick Schultz, the athletic director of Virginia, has been the chair. Hey, he's been a strong chair. How about him coming up with his own picks publicly? That's got to be a precedent-setting event. Well, I think it's nice the way they have opened up the closet, more or less, and let the fans, the athletes, and the coaches take a peek at that selection process. What I think is interesting, too, Brent, is over the years, there were people that didn't want to see the tournament expanded. Now we not only have it expanded, but it's uh, promoted properly, and I think the enthusiasm that's been generated by the expanded tournament is amazing. It's gotten more successful every time that they've uh, increased the field. Sam Jefferson, number 50 off of John Thompson. Ten seconds, close. Good job by Bobby Winston. 62-48, Hoyas. 10-50 away from another championship meeting against Syracuse here in Madison Square Garden. Of course, Jimmy Beheim will remember that uh, championship I was talking about back in 1984, that overtime game, because he had it all but one. Felt it was taken away from him. Jefferson coming down the baseline. He was fouled by Wright. 14 fouls apiece in here in Madison Square Garden, along with Billy Packer. I'm Brent Musburger. It is all Georgetown. 62-48 with 10, 24 to go. And Jefferson stepping to the free throw line. Duda returning with four personal fouls for Providence. Jacek Duda. He was born in Poland and joined his family in Central Falls, Rhode Island. Young man studying computer technology. He'd like to get a computer that can help the Friars climb back in this one. This is not as good a ball club, obviously, as the great prior teams that uh, advanced to the Final Four, in my opinion. I mean, that club with Ernie D and Marvin Barnes got knocked off by Memphis State, then lost to Indiana in the Final Four. It was, that was Bobby's first club that he took out there. Won the Eastern Regional by knocking off Maryland. Actually blew him away. Williams fouls Donovan. Is his first personal foul. And at the conclusion of this game, Billy and I will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Georgetown and Providence. Perry McDonald returning, and Jefferson will sit down for Coach Thompson. John just relaxing over there on the bench, Brent. He started off this ball game really with a lot of intensity on the sidelines, but now he's pretty much in control. He's getting ready for uh, tomorrow. A Duda gets the rebound. Can't put it back in. Scramble. Fires come away with it. It's Delray Brooks. Donovan hits Duda. Bounces off of Highsmith. Can't hit the turnaround. And finally it's Williams for the Hoyers. And the foul is called on right. It's amazing That's how Reggie Williams on the inside, he looks so frail, but he is so tough on the boards. Not only a good leaper, but he's got good strong hands. Highsmith sits down on the Hoya bench. Looking to go long right over the top of the press. He walked, of course, because that ball was not after a score. He can't move on the end line. something the player has to really keep in mind when he has that responsibility to take an inbounds. Key situation in the ball game can really come back to hurt you. 
Vinny, are you surprised that we've had two blowouts here this afternoon in the, uh, in the semis? I really am. I, I thought we'd have two very hotly contested games go right down the wire the way the teams were matched up. Turnover breaking free as Winston falls in front of him. And he is fouled. He'll come up to the free throw line for a pair. And a summation of this semifinal in Madison Square Garden would show that Georgetown has blazed away at better than 50% from the field. Great depth as usual. Williams has scored 16 points, but the story regarding Williams is how many shots he has missed here this afternoon. And Donovan has been held to six points. He scored 34 last night against St. John's. You know, in addition, uh, Brent, one of the responsibilities, obviously, for a player like Donovan after a game like last night, he had to go to the press talk to the press so, you know, he probably never hit that sack till 1 30 this morning and plus the emotional uh, uplift of the great game he had no, no telling when he actually was able to close his eyes and go to sleep but he has not been the same player today that he's been throughout the course of the year and it became obvious early in this first half Bryant returning and Brian comes in and Billy Dunham just says, oh, here comes another guy on me. You know, please give me a break. He hasn't been out of this game, and John Thompson has rotated about four or five different defenders on him. Charlie Brooks has had a pretty good ball game. He's calling that offensive. Yes, he threw him off with his own. That's four fouls on Brooks. I'd have to see this one to believe it. Delray goes by. Little touch. That ball is thrown away. Good catch. Smith on the bounce. And coming through, Brian. First legs. Yep, you don't want to beat a dead horse, Brent, but that's what this game is all about. You've got one team so much pressure than the other. Patino. 8.43 to go and we'll return to Madison Square Garden after these messages from your local stations. CBS Sports presents College Basketball. Today's game is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And in Madison Square Garden, you don't see the Hoyas in the top five, but you could make an argument for them after watching the way they've played the last month of the season. There they are in seventh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't wind up the second-seeded team out west, Mr. Packer, right behind the Sharks, UNLV. You know, Brent, it's going to be interesting. I'm not going to disagree with that, but it's going to be interesting to see how much importance the committee puts on postseason tournament conference uh, championships. Well, they're going to want to leave Syracuse in the East because they've got some first-round games up there at the Great Carrier Dome, and you don't want two teams of the same conference in the uh, four-position bracket. So it would seem to me they're going to have to move the Hoyas someplace. Well, you have clubs like Clemson and Duke that get knocked off early in their tournaments. What does that mean? I guess uh, so far is Temple the only team that's won its conference postseason tournament that was also number one in the regular season? It means we've got a lot of upsets coming our way in the NCAA this year. We saw Gene Barto here last night. His club from UAB knocked off of Western Kentucky on their own floor for a conference champ. Eddie Fogler out there at Wichita State. Uh, winning the ball game against Tulsa on their home floor. In case you're wondering, and you haven't been following the Big East, Providence will be in that 64-team field, regardless of what happens here this afternoon. They certainly deserve that. And I would imagine that so too will the team that they eliminated last night. St. John's will also be in there. Five Big East teams figure to go in. Six for the Big Ten. Michigan solidified its argument this afternoon with that great show against Purdue. Bryant giving it back to Williams, and Reggie goes to McDonald on the inside, and they brought the shot clock down to nine. Now the game clock down to 7.15. They've got a 20-point lead, and the Hoyas will squeeze the life out of the Friars, who've had a great year, nevertheless. Brent, what happened right there is that uh, for the first time, Providence went straight man-to-man, -man, and they really have a problem there being as tired as they are trying to chase Georgetown in man-to-man -man defense, which they have a hard time matching up. 
Let's hear it for Billy Donovan, huh? The way he has played his heart out here this afternoon. Just won't quit. Doesn't have it physically. Now we're worn out taking out taking on Mark Jackson last night. The finals flashing through your way. A couple of great double overtime games. We did not have one of them this afternoon in the garden. It was Route City here today. Syracuse put a whipping on Pittsburgh behind a record-setting performance by their fine point guard Sherman Douglas. And now in this one, it is the Hoyas. A team that I think has been improving steadily the last six weeks of the season. What do you think, Billy? I would agree, Brent. It's a team that uh, obviously was very young at the start of the season. This year in the Big East, the coaches picked five different clubs that could possibly come in first place. Villanova being one that had a very disappointing year. Major story brewing there. But uh, Providence is a club that didn't get any of those votes, but made a nice run here also. So I agree with you. I think they'll probably go five deep. St. John's did not look impressive last night. Now, let me follow up on that story brewing with Villanova because it concerns Gary McClain, their point guard, who keyed their championship win over Georgetown down to Lexington. There are reports that he got into difficulty over some forged checks in his job down at Wall Street and has been fired. And there are other reports that he is going to have a diary coming out in Sports Illustrated. The shot from the corner are not there. Georgetown's ball. That story reportedly coming out in Sports Illustrated is going to concern some alleged drug involvement on McLean's part. That's all we know about the story. In fact, I spoke to a spokesman from Sports Illustrated earlier today, and I asked him if McLean was paid for the diary, and they did not confirm, nor did they deny. Publication date apparently set for later, sometime this month. One of those unfortunate happenings in college athletics and life in general. And you will be reading and hearing more about the Gary McLean tragedy in the next few weeks. Here you see a little half-court trap, 1-3-1 -one -one trap, but Georgetown does a great job. They go ahead and surround it and just make uh, Providence have to chase them to no avail. So the Friars come back down at the 5-30 mark. 70-52, and here they come. They are something defensively. Ryan, the freshman guard with a driving layup. You know, I, I really think, in fairness to Billy Donovan, this would be a good time to take him out of this ball game, Brent. Yeah, I mean, I agree. We almost have a ble bloodletting here. It looks like it's just a chore for some of these starters that have given so many minutes just to go ahead and get through this one. Number 44 is in for the prior. 20 point lead. <laughs> and Patino still hollering over there for the defensive instructions. But you know, I suppose now, in hindsight, we could second guess him for bringing the team over here at 11 o'clock this morning. I, I don't think about I don't think the 11 o'clock was such a bad move, but I thought last night when he had St. John's totally whipped with five, six minutes to go, there was an opportunity to give his players a, a little bit of a breather. I mean, you, when you come over the morning of a ball game, you start to get your legs loosened back up again. That's not so bad. But last night, they were going full tilt and needed to throw those legs out a little bit. But in either case, they've gone up against a team that's a lot quicker and a lot stronger yeah, today. That's what made a difference. Yep. Hindsight, you know, if Providence had been right in their eye, you'd say, what a great job they've done with all that work. You can go either way on things like that in sports. You never know. Easy to pass judgment afterwards. Cut his pop sewers. Providence ball. Let's run through the lineup tonight on CBS. If you've got an opportunity, you might want to dial up one of these shows, The Outlaws, and then the CBS Saturday night movie, The Passion. The Outlaws. Have you seen that show, Billy? I guess they're trying to bring them away. They got a raincoat like those guys. <laughs> you seen that raincoat? That's where they hide the sawed off shotguns on the horses, right? It's like a wild bunch. One guy in this ball game for Providence that looks as close to his normal game is, is Delray Brooks. Everybody else steps low today. And one of the things also, one of the reasons why I think it'd be smart for Rick Pitino to take these guys out, you know, you'd be playing again maybe next Thursday. It takes, you know, sometimes it takes three, four days to get those legs back. It serves no purpose to be out there down 20 with 3.46 to go. Get a guy hurt. Billy Haney hits a three. That'd be a nice note to get him out on. Yeah. <laughs> but if you catch Rick Pitino on that sideline, he's still screaming about the defensive pressure. 
Nice pass. John Thompson going to be upset with that one. And Reggie looked around and said, wait a minute, how do you break so free on that? Williams jumps in and Brooks hits him. And that's five on Delray Brooks. Abdul Shamsi Dean. With Brooks leaving and we get an opportunity to run down Selection Sunday. Going to watch the NBA at noon Eastern time. And then we'll have the Big East Championship, Syracuse and Georgetown, 2.30 Eastern time. Then the McDonald's American Cup Gymnastics Championship, America's Future Stars, and the road to the Final Four, the NCAA Tournament Selection Show at 5.30 Eastern time. Delray Books played a good game here this afternoon for Providence, and he fouled out with 16 points and three assists. Williams hits a free throw. That's 17 total points for Reggie. You would expect him in the final tomorrow to be a lot sharper offensively. Donovan brings the ball down for the Flyers. Taken away by Smith, and the Hoyas will come back. Reggie going to spread him out a little bit. Bring that clock down here at the 2.50 mark. You know, I, I saw a comment by John Thompson about Reggie Williams, and he said, you know, when he was supposed to be a follower and listen, he did that. Now he's supposed to be a leader and lead, and he did that, and he said, I respect him for both. Remember how embarrassed he was after the championship game, the way that he figured he froze on camera? I interviewed him for a time last night, and he really has shown so much progress in that particular area. It's nice to see the development of somebody at any given school. It doesn't have to be Georgetown, but Thompson has really polished him up. And Reggie talks about that moment. Uh, I was involved with that, that little interview and talked about how nervous he was. Yeah. You know, people, you know, you figure that less than uh, nine months before that, he was just a high school kid. All of a sudden, he gets picked as the MVP of that particular game for the national championship, and somebody grabs him by the arm and says, get over here, kid. We need to talk to you. And he, he just throws up. He'll be one of the top round draft choices. He'll go early in the NBA, and he may lead this Georgetown team a long, long ways in the NCAA. One of the things that's tough to play a Georgetown team if you haven't seen them before. I think one of the things that probably the Big East teams are used to that Georgetown intensity, but if you haven't seen anything like that, and they come at you that first couple of rounds in the NCAA tournament, you've got a problem. We've got a timeout. 2.34 to go. The issue no longer in doubt. Game two of our Big East semifinal. Running down with Georgetown ahead of Providence, 80 to 59. Earlier, Sherman Douglas put on a great show for Syracuse. He had 11 assists, setting up a Derek Coleman slam. He also broke the tournament scoring record with 35 points. Here he is hitting two of them against Pittsburgh. And Syracuse rolled on in to the final with that win over Pittsburgh. You know, it's one thing, Brent, to break the scoring record, but then to be only three away from the all-time assist record. Kipper has it rejected and knocked away. Highsmith looked like he worked hard, and there's Patino still hanging in there. And he's keeping those starters out there. Kipper, Donovan, Lewis. Somebody they put in a 40-minute. Donovan has not been out of the game hey, today. Dude, Donovan, you got to ask for some overtime. Yeah. Huh? Come on. You know, the other thing that, that's kind of tough for a Donovan, pro player, Brent, you know, when, when you start thinking, you know, he's got to look at it and realistically. I don't know if he can play. And he's only, uh, he may be a little under 60. Play primarily zone. Billy, what about the CBA? Some of the smaller kids found a home there. I haven't paid that much attention to it. And maybe we get to that four-on-four -four NBA game, and then uh, he'd have an opportunity. He sure has the heart for it. Fox stop the 212. Now here's the one fell on the Georgetown team you don't want to put on the line is Reggie Williams. You're going to foul, try to foul somebody else, but at this point, 19 down with 212 to go, you ought to just try to play it out. 
It might not be a bad idea to get some of your younger people an opportunity to go in there like a Conlon so they can get some experience for the future. points for Reggie this afternoon. He's hit five of eight from the line. They keep talking about getting out the Providence players up to Reggie Williams. He's still out here for Georgetown with a 20-point lead. Yeah, I'm surprised about that, too. They're still sticking, sticking with their patterns to the mark of a well-coached team. They haven't gotten carried away, throwing up bad shots. Donovan's three. Charles Smith has had a good solid ball game for Georgetown. He's contributed more offensively than we've seen him. He certainly has always played well defensively, but they haven't not been around the whole. Here's the Dean Smith, four corners. If you're Providence, you have to stay right with your man. Very difficult to double up. Time running out on Providence in the Big East. And it's going to be Georgetown and Syracuse. McDonald will come up to the free throw line and shoot a pair with 1.17 to go. You know, I mentioned that final, uh, Brennan, 1984, where Pearl Washington had the great game and uh, Syracuse eventually lost in overtime. They also faced each other in the final in 1980. All coming to Southern Providence. Georgetown won that ball game. Send in number 41. He'll sit Smith down. And Lang. He doesn't figure to play at all. He doesn't even have his name on the back of his jersey. Tom Lang. And yes, in case you are wondering, he is the only white athlete on the Georgetown team. And he is a big favorite of his teammates and, and the crowd. And uh, when they saw that he was going to get a little playing time, they were in favor of it. Oh, Fred, it was interesting. There was, a, there was a photographer who came up to me while the teams were warming up today, and he had a picture. And he ha it was Jonathan Edwards, and he said, under the picture was a caption, Tom Lang. He said, is this Tom Lang? I said, no. I said, it's not Tom Lang. You've missed by a mile. Right. Bangs in a three-pointer. I wonder if that was uh, supposed to be a wisecrack, but he actually was in the paper. Look at the fans are going crazy. And he was fouled. Lang was fouled over there. Jefferson returning at some of the final scores. What did you figure the Look chances by. were of Tom Lang getting in the Big East semifinal game today against Providence? Has to feel good about that. Inside of a minute. If he hits a basket here, he's going to bring down the house, what is left of it. Jackson off the four corners, traveled. 40 seconds to go. I bet he plays hard nose just like everybody else. Oh, I'm that's the only thing you imagine how tough he's got to be, yeah? <laughs> Foul. And Darrell Wright coming up to the free throw line for Providence. Patrick Ewing makes his exit over on the side, congratulating his uh, former coach. Darrell Wright on the line. Billy Donovan is going to go the distance. Just 40 minutes. Huh? Yep, he's going to 40 minutes. He has put in a long, let's see, finished at about 11.20 last night. Here we are at 6 o'clock, so he's played two games in more than three hours, is that? Now, what, is the casino practice hours? at 7 o'clock again tomorrow? No, I think he's going to give him the day off tomorrow. If he doesn't, they ought to maybe have to take him for a little examination. <laughs> They're still scrapping out there. You know who everybody wants Lang to touch that ball one last time, get a shot off. Well, they've got 15 seconds. He made the back door cut. And he's got it. Kill 
Murray, and it is stolen, and that's it. It'll be Georgetown and Syracuse for the Big East Championship. 84-66, the Hoyas. Georgetown, a winner, and our Chevrolet most valuable players of this game are, well, for Providence, Delray Brooks, and for Georgetown, their entire bench. They contributed 32 points to this win here this afternoon, and a check of the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. We'll have a final thought from the Garden in just a moment.